so my name is Nikhil Shetty. Uh, I work for the University of Wyoming as a data visualization specialist. Um, so I'm appointed uh, kind of in two different departments, uh, which are kind of related. Uh, one is the School of Energy Resources, which houses the visualization facility, and in the Advanced Research Computing Center, which has the supercomputers. So um, I connect uh, the supercomputing with the visualization facility. So my vision for the software uh, kind of stems from uh, the needs that we have in the university. Um, so we have um, a high performance supercomputing center, um, HPC center, and we have our advanced visualization facility. And then we have scientists uh, and researchers who have very large data which they want to visualize in such kind of a facility. Um, so there are advantages to kind of using the facility and I want to be able to uh, provide uh, a very easy way to kind of use uh, the facility, which currently uh, we don't have very many tools to kind of do that. Uh, so I want to uh, give uh, researchers an opportunity to be inside the space and be able to work inside the space uh, rather than outside of it and leverage this uh, to their advantage. Although we have um, a high-end visualization facility, uh, today we see a lot of uh, immersive technology coming in which is very cheap and very accessible. Uh, and the Oculus Rift is one such technology. Uh, we want our software to also leverage uh, such devices as well. And what we are currently seeing is a port of the same software on an, on an Oculus Rift. So users can experience a very similar things that uh, some of our scientists experience in the cave, but uh, in a more personalized uh, um, and much more cheaper device like the Oculus. The prototype that we've put together is an example of how uh, immersive visualization can actually benefit uh, in debugging and really help, help uh, science and scientific uh, scientific endeavor using using big data. What we have here is uh, a data from uh, one of our researchers who looks at uh, kind of tiny volumetric uh, uh, data of of rocks uh, in the reservoirs, and uh, they want to uh, model um, kind of uh, the same rock in a ball and stick model, so as to run some simulations on them. Now, uh, traditionally, they would create their own data set and try to match their qualitative results and go from there. Uh, but the researcher wanted a little bit more. Uh, for him, true science is not just looking at uh, qualitative information, but also backing the qualitative information with uh, quantitative analysis. So he wanted to match his ball and stick model with the actual uh, scanned image of the rock. And uh, to do, uh, in order to verify uh, the model that he was creating, and he couldn't use any uh, 2D desktop-based display uh, to actually get into his rock and verify that because of the complexity of the entire data set and the complexity of what he was doing. And so here we see an example where you are actually immersed in this space, and he came in at successive iterations looking at his data set and debugging as he went along making his code to develop the model. Uh, so we see uh, kind of an isosurface extraction of, of uh, the empty space inside the rock and we want to see whether the ball kind of fits within that empty space so that it kind of mimics uh, the entire model. What I'd like for people to take away from this is to uh, look at immersive visualization uh, as a workspace um, rather than uh, just a display technology um, where you can do active debugging of uh, some of your code within the space uh, in order to verify um, the valid and validate some of your work um, f uh, the way uh, one of our researchers has done in this example. Um, a big takeaway will be uh, to reconsider uh, immersive visualization facilities 
and VR facilities is more as a programming and a development environment than a pure projector-like display environment.